just a little bit late this morning. We've had just an exciting morning, exciting morning today. Um, we've been talking about ministry. We've been talking about resources this morning in our early gathering. And so we're getting ready to worship the Lord. We have so much to be grateful for. I'm so glad that you are a part uh, of our time together today. Um, as being a part of the body of Christ around the world, we have a calling upon our lives. And you who are a part of us, New Life Church of God, home base here in Palmetto, Louisiana, we're partnering together for kingdom work. And we're so grateful that you've tuned in today. We're going to be celebrating what God has called us to be about. Uh, the text of scripture for our teaching today is Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. As an early church partnered together and God added to them daily. So we praise you. We, we, we are so grateful for your participation in the work of ministry in what we're doing. So come join us in our sanctuary as we worship the Lord this morning. Blessings. Oh God, 
as we bless your name. Thank you that we have welcomed our families to worship with us today, oh God. And uh, we just want to lay it all on the altar this morning. Be pleased with our gathering. Be pleased with our worship. Jesus, you are the audience this morning. Be pleased with our worship. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to have the reading of our scripture in unison this morning. As that you would stand with me as you're physically able. As our uh, scripture this morning comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 11 and, uh, and 10. As we shall read together in uh, preparation for our message time today, partnering together. Let's read the word together. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your sower of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Let the church say amen. 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 amen, amen. You can remain standing as you're physically able. Sister Susan will come and lead us. Our hymn of the morning, once again we come. Holy but a goodie to the house of the, Lord, of the Lord, to unite in songs of praise. And that will be followed by God is so good.
being merciful on us, oh God. Thank you, Father God, for turning it around for us, God. Thank you for answering our prayers, Father God. When we feel that you don't hear us, but we know that you are there, God. We know that you will do things in your own way, in your own time. Please give us patience, oh God, that we will understand your will and your way. We pray, Father God, that you would just go with us day by day. Let your light shine through us, that men will see you and glorify you into the heaven. So let's give God some praise this morning. Let's give him, lift him up. Let's show him gratitude.
Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we do give you thanks and praise this morning. Thank you for your faithfulness, for your goodness unto us, oh Lord. You are good, and we bless your name today. You are the Lord, our Father. You reign, Lord God, in heavenly places. You are at the same place, Lord God, at the same time. You're in every place at the same time, oh God. How great and awesome you are. We don't want to put you in a little box. We don't want to put you just, Lord God, where we can wrap our hands around you. You are a great big God. You created the whole world and you in every place right now. That's why we can go boldly into the throne of grace, oh God. Elevating you, lifting you up in our hearts and our minds and in our fellowship, oh God. We thank you for who you are. You are our Savior. You are our Creator. You are the, our Sustainer. You are the one who gives us breath to breathe today, oh God. You are the one who allows our hearts, Lord God, to be in this physical body to uh, continue to uh, be vibrant, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are our rock. Thank you, Lord. You are our rock. You are our yes. fortress, Lord God. When the storms of life beat on us and blow yes. against us, oh God, yes. I thank you that we can you. find ourselves in the cleft of your love. Oh, our heart's Lord. desire is to know you as we've never known you before. Our heart's desire is to be obedient yes. unto you, oh God. Yes. Our heart's desire, Lord God, is to trust you, Lord God. Please, Lord. Uh, as the songwriter said, it's so sweet yes. to trust in Jesus, just to take him yes. at your word, oh God. There are a lot of words out there today, Lord God, in the world that we live in. A, a lot of folks giving direction and a lot of folks giving opinion, oh God. But yes. I thank you, Lord, for your word, thank Lord you, God. Thank that your word, Lord God, anchors us. Your word leads us and guides yes. us. And we want to continue to follow you, oh God. We thank you for who you are, Lord God. We lift up the needs of the hour, Lord God. You know the needs, Lord God, of those who have pressed their way into the sanctuary today. Those, Lord God, who have been tuning in today. You are a healer, oh God. Healing is your children's bread, oh God. So we speak to those, Lord God, who are dealing with sicknesses, oh God, physically. Be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus oh, Christ. Thank you, I thank you, Lord God, that the bread of healing is being partaken, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God, for blessing your people. Yeah. Father, I thank you for healing, oh, Lord God, not just bodies, but healing minds, yeah. oh God. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, yes. those who are struggling and wrestling, Lord God, yeah. with maybe even yeah. anxiety issues, oh God, maybe even whatever else, Lord God, is weighing on them. I Thank you, Lord God, Thank for taking you. everything Thank in our lives. And as we cast our cares on you, we roll our cares yes. on you. Yes. For you care for us in such a special Thank way, oh God. Thank you, Lord. You know, Lord God, the, the burdens, Lord God. You know the heartfelt needs of yes. our family, Lord God. Lord God, even about our neighbors. Bless, Lord God. May your kingdom come. May your will be done, oh God. Yeah. Thank you that we can go against the gates of hell and to take back everything that the enemy has stolen, has taken from us, oh God. Thank you that we can do that, Lord God, with a boldness that does not come from us, but it comes from you and from your word. And we're seeking, Lord God, to be those vessels of, of righteousness, yes. those vessels of reconciliation, oh God. And I thank you for your calling and for your will, oh, thank God. You, Jesus. Father, we recognize that we're living in dark times, oh God. We're living in times, Lord God, where the, the devil is bold with so much stuff, oh God. Yes, 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 thank you, Lord God, for the fervent, effectual yes. prayer of the righteous, oh God. It avails much. I thank you, Lord God, that we can fight the forces of darkness with light, oh God. May our light shine, Lord God, that others may see and others may know, oh God. Yes, Father, we thank Lord. you, Lord God, even for churches throughout our community, thank you, Jesus. throughout our parish, our state, our nation, oh God, even yes. the whole world, oh God. Oh, please, Father, Lord. may we be found faithful unto your calling, faithful yes. unto what you have yes. uh, ordained for the body of Christ, for, the, yes. for your church yes, to be about, Lord yes. God. Yes. So have your way. Oh, we pray for leaders. Lord. We pray for our elected officials, oh God. Oh, 
We pray, Lord God, for those systems that provide provide governance over us, oh God. Yes. Be it in the courts, Lord God, be it in law enforcement, oh Lord. Yes. Whatever it may be, oh God, we speak for your will in the name yes. of Jesus. So Father, do a fresh work within us. Yes. Breathe upon us afresh and anew. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, oh God. And we can keep on saying amen to your will amen. for our lives, yeah. for our fellowship, oh God. Yeah. Be yeah. praised and be glorified, Lord God, in the house today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And thank God. So glad that you are a part of the fellowship on the, on today, and as we join in today, readying ourselves for uh, the message uh, today. Uh, again, as we uh, have gathered this morning in our early gathering and celebrated God's goodness unto us, uh, our message uh, title: uh, Partnering Together. We're in this together, being a part of the body of Christ. Our text of scripture will be found. In the second chapter of Acts, verses 42 through 47, the early church partnered together, worked together. God did mighty things among them, even as they have done so. And so, even as we are, even at the beginning of our 
you will, a new fiscal year. We want to be reminded of what God has called the church to be about and how important gatherings like this really are throughout the whole world. And so we're going to be reminded of that in our message time for today, celebrating God's goodness indeed. As we ready ourselves for our message, our Somali chorus will come to us today. Sister Susan will lead us again, preparing ourselves. Lord, prepare me. Wait, may uh, we sing this um, uh, again with meaning, with conviction. God, prepare me. Even as we look towards the week ahead, the afternoon ahead, tomorrow. Uh, again, Lord, prepare me. I want to be a vessel to be used by you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Let's ready ourselves for the message after our Somalian chorus.
sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with this giving, I'll be a paints that picture, gives us that, uh, that snapshot of those snapshots and what our fellowship, our coming together, our purpose. It's easy sometimes, I guess, to lose our purpose, just coming out of a tradition, if you will, but we can come out of great meaning and out of great uh, anticipation, expectation, and a greater power than any power that we have in our natural uh, existences. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Those who were being saved. And so, friends, we gather on places like this today and uh, on other times. Uh, we gather not just for a history lesson about Jesus. We don't gather just for a cheerleading ceremony or cheerleading, rah, 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 Jesus, give me a J, give me an E, give me an S, give me a U, give me another S. We don't gather just for a cheerleading session, if you will, uh, but we gather as the living presence of the Lord in the earth. Oh my, you who are redeemed, you who know Jesus and live for Jesus, you are the living presence of the Lord wherever you are. And then as we assemble ourselves in a place like this where there are numerous individuals, we become the living presence of the Lord on the earth. Think about that. We live in a world that's so dark and dreary and gloomy. But yet when we come together as this place, we become the living presence of of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, it's a special gathering. It's a special place. And so we want our hearts to be after the Lord Jesus Christ. If we gather to be his living presence. Oh, want to know where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? Our gatherings are to be the living presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Attach our minds to that. Attach our hearts and our spirits unto that. And so even as you've heard the call to worship today, oh, we've been called to worship as the living presence of the Lord in the earth today. I mean, we, we are it. Oh, you may look around and want to roll your eyes, but we are it. And it's not just us. 
It's houses of worship all over the planet that we have been called to be the living presence of the Lord on yeah. the earth. Yeah. Oh my. And so we don't gather to talk about how bad the world is. That's not the focus of our gathering. We don't gather even to, to talk about how good we are. Because both would be misplaced big time. And so we don't gather to talk about how bad the world is and to build a fortress around us so we don't have to deal with them out there. That's not our calling. That's not what we're about. But we gather to be taught. We gather to be equipped. We gather to be inspired to take responsibility for the world around us. Uh, that doesn't sound like much when we're all concerned just about me, myself, and I. But literally, our coming together is to be taught, is to be equipped, is to be inspired to take responsibility for the world around us. And so even as we do that, we are very mindful of the prayer that Jesus prayed on Calvary's cross as he was dying. He said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. He was taking responsibility for the world that was around him. Yeah. Ah, and so we have come to demand that uh, light, light take the place of darkness. We've come to make that demand that even as we're living in a dark day, as we're living in a dark time, we've come to demand that light take the place of darkness in our world. We've come to go against the gates of hell and to take back what the enemy has stolen from us. Yeah. Oh, we may be weary, we may be worn, we may be bruised, but we understand that as we gather as the living presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, we've come to make that demand. We've come to speak of not our battles, not against flesh and blood, but against those powers and principalities, rulers in high places. We've come to take back all that the enemy has stolen and to demand that light take over darkness. Yeah. That's yeah. the purpose of our coming. Our coming cannot be so comfortable that we push aside what we're truly called to be about. We come, as we've said it in times past, to see that Jesus becomes famous in the world. To see that Jesus is talked about in the world around yeah. us. And so as we've come together as his living presence, we want to see Jesus uh, become famous and talked about. That's what our desire is. Yeah. And so we understand that the news reports aren't getting any better. We, are, we come to understand that darkness prevails in our communities and forces of darkness are taking lives younger and younger and younger. We understand that. We, we see the news. We see on social media posts. We see it maybe on the jobs that you work at. You see it in the marketplaces where you go. We, we understand that the news reports aren't getting any better. But I, I want to stand on what I see in the Word of God and becoming convinced that the local church is the hope of the world. Yes, it is. Ah, ah, stay with me. The local church is the hope of the world. Now, is government the hope of the world? Is education the hope of the world? Hmm. Are the awards programs that we see on TV, are they the hope of the world? Oh my. And so it's, it's in that kind of light where we can see, well, what else is the hope of the world? Because everybody is in it for themselves. Everybody is about, I want to get my piece of the pie, and I want to obtain this, and I want to do that. When we see all of this, I have my political agendas, and so therefore, as elected, I'm going to do my political agenda because this is what I want to take place. Is that the hope of the world? So, listen, it would be a different story if there wasn't an answer. There wasn't an answer. Again, Jesus, is, Jesus and the local church is being pushed to the margins of our society little relevance, little uh, things coming into play, if you will. But because there is an answer today, it brings life unto every local church. Jesus is the answer. For the 
darkness that we see in the world, yeah. for the hopelessness that exists in the world, for the entanglements that people get into in the world, yeah. Jesus is the answer. Yes, Let that resonate in your hearts and your spirit. Let that lay within you that Jesus is the answer. How is this? Well, just look at what Jesus has done for many of you. As they said in days gone by, not in hashtag, but he picked you up, turned you around. Ah, put your feet on solid ground. Pick you up, turn you around. Yes. You're no longer the same. You may not be everything that you know God wants you to be, but you know that you're no longer the same. That he touched you. Yes. Something yes. happened and now you know that he's touched you and made you whole. Oh, Look what Jesus has done for you. Yes. Those who have opened their hearts yes. to the Lord Jesus. Look what he's done for you. You don't talk like you used to talk yeah. before. Yeah. You don't handle problems like you used to handle problems before. There is all there's suddenly a, some kind of conscience of awareness that goes on in your mind and in your heart yeah. in regards to yeah. your behavior, in regards to your carrying yourselves. Look what Jesus has done for oh, you. Oh yes, Lord. Oh my. Listen, there is but one power on this planet that can change the composition of the human heart. Amen. Only one power. You can pass every law that you want to pass. You can take back parole on everybody that's been arrested and they have to rot in jail. But that's not going to change. The, the composition of the human heart is not going to change it. One power can change a hateful heart to a loving heart. Yeah. One power that can change a, a messed up life into a life that now honors God. There is but one power that can do that. Yeah. And that's the power of God. Yeah. The power of God can change the heart. Yeah. It can. Yeah. If your life hasn't been transformed like God says he can transform it, don't blame God. Don't blame God if your heart has not been transformed. Don't blame him. His power is available to whosoever will. If your heart is dark and gloomy, Jesus can change that heart, transform that heart, make you into a new creature. That power is available unto whosoever will. Yes, it is. It's but one power. Check your news feed this week. Yeah. See if you find another power that can change hearts. Check your social media pages to see if there's a power that can change hearts. Or is it just a power that's about me, myself, and I? What I want to do. What I can do. Yeah. And so our calling is to understand that it can be done. So even as we teach the word, even as we equip you with the word, as we inspire you with the word, we want you to see that you live for the Lord Jesus Christ, even as your hearts are changed. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Yeah. Lord, prepare yeah. me. That's the yielding of our hearts, the yielding of our, our life yeah. unto the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we understand, even as we are partnering together, it's just not a one-man show. It's just not a preacher's show. Mm -hmm. Even as we see in the book of Acts, when, when the Holy Spirit, when the tongues of fire fell, it didn't just fall on one person. Mm -hmm. It fell on everybody. Yeah. And they established, they're coming together that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's available to whosoever will. And so when we see yeah. the Holy Spirit's presence on each other, as we partner in serving God. Oh, what a wonderful calling that is. When we can see the Holy Spirit's presence on one another. I see the Spirit in you. I see the Spirit in you as you move throughout your day. As you move throughout your responsibilities. If we can just see the Holy Spirit's presence upon our lives. The Holy Spirit isn't trying to run from us. 
again, we're trying to yield ourselves unto him so that we can partner together to do the kingdom's business yeah. for God. Glory to God. And so in Acts chapter 2, in our text of scriptures there, 42 through 47, we see the people of the church. They were mobilized to worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. And so as we read through all of that every day, they continue to break bread in their homes, ate together with glad hearts, praising God, enjoying the favor of all people. They, they were mobilized to worship the Lord, to study the word. Verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship as they were mobilized to study the word and even to reach out to others. That passage closed and every day, and the Lord added to the number daily those who were being saved. Those who needed their hearts transformed. Hearts to be remade, to love the Lord, to honor the Lord. Hearts that were hardened. Hearts that were filled with darkness and wickedness and evil and malice and spite and just killing people with hearts like that. Killing people that they want to kill other people. Hearts that are turned over to God. He can change and transform and melt away all of that hardness. Melt away all of that filth. Melt away all of that entanglement. The power of God is able to do that. His son Jesus is the answer. And so this is we re we recognize that and our worship and our study to should lead us to reach out to the lost, mm -hmm. to search and to take on it within, a, within our spirits, an intercession even for those who don't know the Lord Jesus. Right. See, the Pharisees were giving Jesus a hard time when he began to entertain the company of sinners. We see this in Luke chapter 15. The, the religious leaders of the day saw Jesus and he, he was taken in by sinners. He was coming, he was having company with those who were quote unquote, as we said Wednesday night, sinners. <laughs> and in that 15th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, Jesus responds to them with parables. The parable about the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. The shepherd searches until he finds the lost sheep. Leaves the 99, finds the lost sheep. The woman who finds the lost coin, she searched her home all over looking for that lost coin. The parable that Jesus teaches. And that third parable uh, we know as the prodigal son. The father seeks at the end of the world room to see his lost son. Looking for his, his son who had gone his own way. But again, looking. And so... We can't miss that truth. We're living in dark days, dark times. It's so easy just for us to shut our doors to the whole world. But what our calling is, is being partnered together for the body of Christ, seeking and searching for those who are lost, for those who are hurting, and, and, and doing that in the sense that we can do that. We can, and all, all the tension begins to go through that. I don't know if you've ever been in a mall or in a large store and you've heard the intercom come on and sometimes they announce it this way, we have a lost parent in the house. <laughs> so therefore we're trying to find that parent. It's the child that's like drifted off. And so instantly it, it draws everyone's attention to that lost child. Now even on our devices, uh, there is an alert that goes out sometimes when there are there is an elderly person that's going missing or there is a child that's going missing. Our phones go off and you put that message in. If we can see anybody that fits this description, we're looking for that person. Yes. Yes. That searching. Mm -hmm. That searching. And so even in the midst of our fulfilling our responsibilities of the day, our responsibilities on our jobs, our responsibilities in family, mm -hmm. there becomes that messaging also <laughs> that there are those that we have to be attentive to in our hearts and our spirits who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, whose hearts are still hardened, mm -hmm. hearts who are still far away from God. Yes, yes. 
So that becomes a part of our calling, a part of our passion, a part of our praying, a part of who we are in seeking for those that have hearts that are hardened in interceding and in praying for them and recognizing that they need a Savior. What can we do even as we seek to mobilize ourselves to reach out? Just a couple of simple things I can leave with you even as we agree to partner together for the kingdom's work. Pray for those who don't know Jesus Christ. Pray for those who have a hardened heart that life is not making sense for them. They don't have an answer for life. Sometimes they put up devices and walls around themselves to kind of shield themselves from greater and greater hurt. But our prayer is need for them that their hearts would be open to the Lord Jesus Christ. We can pray. We can pray for them. We can ask even God to lay a life on my heart, on my mind. God, who do you want me to pray for? Who is it? And you could just simply just breathe that prayer. Lord, who is it that you want me to pray for this week? Who really needs to turn their life to the Lord? The way that they're going is just needing to know that, oh God, lay somebody on my heart. Yeah. And then what you can also do, we're called to live a unique lifestyle. Yeah, unique lifestyle. Back in the day, we used to call it holy. <laughs> but you and I have been called to live a unique lifestyle in how we live. It makes a difference. In a world that's dark, in a world that's confused, in the world that's caught up in a lot of entanglements, for you and I to live a unique lifestyle. Yeah, we can do that. You know, unfortunately, much of, our, much of our daily struggles comes to us about how can we make it in a tough world. That becomes a lot of our daily struggle. God, I'm trying to make it. How can I make it? You want to put somebody else on my mind? What? I'm trying to make it myself. <laughs> much of our daily struggles. How can we make it through all the stuff that we have to handle? Our jobs, our responsibilities, our bills, our problematic families at best. <laughs> but you know what? This week, why don't you just try it one day? One day this week. One day. Rather than focusing all your energy and how can I make it? How can I do it? How can I put this together for me? Just one day. God, place something. And I just want to focus on that one individual. Yes, yes. That one person who, whose heart needs to turn to God. Mm -hmm. Just lay one soul on my So God, oh, 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 oh Wednesday, God, I'm not going to, not about me and my struggle. Lay a heart. Lay somebody on my heart that I can pray for them. That I can take my focus just, oh, just on me that one day I can look for that lost person and to pray for, maybe even to help, maybe even to share. Just one day, just one half day. To, I know we all have, trust me, we all have issues and concerns. Mm -hmm. This world system has pulled us really away from community to just individual stuff. Yes, yes. But that we can be called to say, God, as we partner together, you may say, well, I don't know if my prayer will make a difference. <laughs> well, it's about to do more than if you didn't pray. <laughs> and so that you have somebody on your heart. It may be somebody, God, I pray for that person so much I'm tired of it. Find somebody else to pray for. <laughs> that may be part of your worrying issues. Find somebody else yes. to pray for. Lord, lay somebody mm -hmm. on my heart. And just giving place for the Spirit of God now. To speak into our hearts, to bring something to our attention, even as we engage in a brand new week, God. I want to partner together with what you are doing in the world. I want to understand that it became so important for, for you, Lord Jesus, that seeking and that searching that you even taught in the parables about 
how to do that, how to, 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 to seek somebody who's struggling, being living in difficult days. It's only the power of God that can change a heart. Only the power of God. We're going to pray together this morning. and Maybe that there's somebody else who's your heart needs to be fully open to God. Now is your time. Now is that time that's for you, that you have heard what, what moves God, what moves heaven. We want to understand that we can turn our hearts. God can handle our problems. God can handle that that so invades our hearts. Our hearts can be turned unto God. And that call is also for you and I somebody that God lays on our heart that we can pray for, that we can intercede for. Somebody pray for us. Yes. Somebody is yes. praying yes. for us. Yes. We can pray mm -hmm. for someone else. Yes. Will you stand with me this morning? Mm -hmm. As we pray together, you know, altars are open. May our hearts be after God's heart. And may we not become so discouraged in the world today. Jesus is the answer. He is the answer. All of our lives, all of those around us, he is the answer. May our hearts be open unto him. And even as the Lord lays lives and names upon your heart. You can begin praying for them even now. Even now. Lord, have your way. Have your way, Lord. Father, we give you thanks, Lord God, that we're just in this, the stillness of this moment, oh God, the Holy Spirit is spoken into lives and to hearts, oh God. Jesus, we want you to be famous. We want you to be talked about. We understand the days and the times that we're living in. There's so much that pulls apart, little that's pulling together, oh God. The local church, the hope of the world. We pray for this local church. We pray for every local church in our community. Every local church in this parish. Oh God, and even with 80,000 people living within this parish, oh God. And the throngs of local churches, oh God. <clears throat> May we join in to be the hope of the world by what we do and what we're teaching and what we are coming together to be the living presence of the Lord. Yeah. Do something fresh, Lord God, in our midst. Do something powerful in our midst. And as we gather as the local presence of Jesus Christ, it's not our will, it's not our way. We are the living presence of Jesus. So we cannot die. We cannot quit. We cannot surrender. Lord God, we pray again, not just for this church, but every local church in the north, south, east, and the west of us. And we cannot afford to die, but we will be the living presence of the Lord. And ignite a fire within us, Lord God. And ignite flames, Lord God, of your Holy Spirit, Lord God, upon our lives, upon our homes, upon our households, oh God. That you can be lifted up. You can be glorified, oh Lord. And that's our prayer. That's our desire. As we partner together, Lord God, may we see the Holy Spirit's presence in each other's lives, oh God. I thank you for this journey that we're on. We're being equipped. Those equipping and training opportunities are there, oh God. Those teaching opportunities are there, oh God. Ah, Lord God, may we take seriously our calling to be part of the body of Christ, oh God. You're glorified and you're lifted up, oh God. And we just bless your name and thank you, Lord God, that there is still hope in the world today. There's still hope, Lord God, for our families, Lord God. And we bless you for that, oh God. Thank you for a, a, a reminder. Thank you for a fresh awakening, Lord God, of your spirit's power, your spirit's move. 
Continue to change hearts, Lord God. Transform hearts. As we lay our hearts on the altar, oh God, keep on doing a fresh work, a continual work in our hearts, Lord God. Take us to new levels, oh God. As we surrender more and more to you, oh God, continue to work in us, Lord God, the hope of salvation, oh God. Transforming us, changing us, Lord God. As we are on this journey, Lord God, we are learning, we're being challenged, Lord God. God. We're being uh, told what, what can't be done. But Lord, with you, all things are possible, oh Lord. So we celebrate you, Lord God, and we give you thanks, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus truly is the answer. He is the answer. That's the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I like to say, you know, I'm 87 years old, and I just thank God for just keeping me safe and able to work in the yard and do in my garden and everything. I thank you for the courage and the strength He's given me. Yeah. Amen. 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 So good to. To have each of all, every one of you here for your attentiveness and to the hour, and uh, we bless the Lord. May we all be encouraged and uh, giving thanks unto the Lord for who He is, what He's doing in our midst, what He's doing in uh, in our fellowship. And uh, I just want to welcome the church to to help me to have a word of prayer. I want to ask Lois and Joy to come meet me. Uh, just right here, and I uh, just want to, to pray with them as they have reached out and said they want to be a part of the fellowship. And we've seen them here for several weeks and uh, months, and uh, just want to uh, let you know that uh, we're grateful that you've chosen this place to be a place of spiritual nourishment, spiritual fellowship, and uh, again, with just those open arms. Uh, just want to, to love on you, to be available unto you for all that God has in store for you. Will you pray with me as we pray for Lois and for, for joy this morning? Father, we give you thanks and praise, Lord God, for the blessings of the hour. How great you are, oh God. And I thank you that even as your word tells us, Lord God, and you added to the church daily those who are being saved, oh God. Thank you for the confession of faith, Lord God, uh, that joy and Lois has, Lord God. And we bring them before your presence, O oh God, and we pronounce blessings upon them. We pronounce favor upon them, O oh God. Meet every need according to your riches and glory. How great you are, O oh God. Now, Father, you know the plans that you have for their lives, O oh God. And, Lord, we speak forth your will, your plan, your purposes in their lives in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray an anointing upon them in the name of Jesus. Meet every need. Every need is met now in the name of Jesus, O oh God. So I thank you, Lord God, for their lives. I thank you, Lord God, for the talent, for the gifts that you are giving unto them, O oh God. May they use them for your glory, O oh God. Lay, lay other lives upon their minds, upon their hearts, O oh God. That even as our hearts are being changed, our hearts are being given unto you, we bless you, Lord God, for that. May your kingdom increase, Lord God, because of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. So even as you leave, you can show them some love. Out of the Lord. For their lives, for their presence, part of the fellowship. I better do something before I forget it. Um, May birthdays. We had a rainstorm last Sunday, didn't we? Okay, so D. Rito. See, D. I did have to call you up here after all. Happy birthday. These are our May birthdays, the conclusion of our May birthdays. So. April. Hey, boy, this is April. Okay, all right, all right. Happy birthday still. Thank you. Yeah, I guess May, last. You're going to tell me when your birthday. Bernie's drummer, just, oh, she's there. There she is. Oh, she's Bernie's. Bernie's. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. I have 
one more up here that I see. Leanna Curie, just left. All right. Oh, she's right there. All right. Happy birthday. One of those late birthdays. All right. Well, Mother Day birthday. Happy birthday. All right. All right. Okay, look, that's all I see up here now. All right, all right. Okay, again, as we've come together, thank you for your continual support, work of ministry here at, at New Life. This morning we uh, had a partnering together meeting, if you will, and uh, approved a budget for this fiscal year. Our fiscal year goes from June 1 to May 31st, and uh, approved a budget of a of $154,000, just over $154,000, which is probably the largest budget this church has ever had. Ever had. And over 100 years, thanks be to God. And so we are so appreciative of your support uh, in the work of ministry here and so grateful for uh, that that you do. And we're going to keep on keeping on and uh, looking to the Lord for all that he has in store for us. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, we're going to continue on. Some opportunities, wonderful opportunities, want to uh, make you available unto. Next, five, next, next Sunday is Father's Day. Oh, we got some fathers clapping. All right, all right, all right. Next Sunday is Father's Day. It'll be a full day. Again, we're gathered at 10 o'clock hour. Uh, we'll recognize and celebrate our fathers. And uh, there will be the, the Community Center of Hope and the Juneteenth program will provide a meal for our fathers after church on next Sunday. Woohoo! Okay, okay, <laughs> all right. It's gonna be a great day. Now, there's a time change in our Juneteenth program. Last Sunday we announced that it's at five o'clock. It'll be at three o'clock right here. And uh, hey, if you want to kind of hang out and hang around, I know that um, uh, Mike Staley and his family will be providing music before that particular program will start at three o'clock. And again, the community is invited. Again, we're honoring all retired educators and those who are ret who retired from the school system. We want to honor those in the community, being a part of the community, letting them know thank you for loving on our children. Thank you for caring for our children. So all retired educators, all those who are employed by the school system, whether you pick the kids up in the morning or whether you clean the buildings after they left, if you are a retired employee, we want to recognize you doing our Juneteenth celebration next Sunday at 3 o'clock. So there'll be flyers up, uh, continue announcements going forth. We have a couple of musicals next Saturday night in the community, in the area. We're also making sure that that'll be announced next Saturday, the 15th, right here at 6 p.m., Again, we're going to have a night of worship experience by the City of Refuge Praise Team. That's straight out of White Castle, Louisiana. And again, we said last week, Dolithia, um, she's a Doucette now, Malvo Doucette. Again, a native of this North Central area. She wanted to come home and sing. And so she asked us, would we host the praise team that she's a part of? And come on, and her mother-in-law got so excited. Her mother-in-law said, oh, yeah, we're going to cook for everybody, too. Yeah. <sighs> okay, all right, but 6 o'clock Saturday. Okay, 6 o'clock Saturday evening, a night of worship experience. It's open to the whole community. It's open to everyone. Also, um, I would say Jawan's wife, but I need to say something else, Marquisha. don't I? Markeisha Stevens. Y'all, y'all know. She will be doing... Um, liturgical dance also as a part of that and uh, again so just a night of worship uh, Dr. Asia Thomas will be the MC for that night and so again uh, bringing the, the gift of musical ministry uh, the gospel uh, count even to uh, our community so June 15th 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, June 16th 10 a.m. Father's Day 
uh, Sunday school teacher. We had 9 a.m. Sunday school, 10 a.m. worship. At the close of worship, again, dinner prepared for our fathers in honor of our fathers. 3 o'clock p.m., our community Juneteenth celebration will be honoring all retired educators during that particular gathering. Uh, so next weekend, and if you're not a Gidry, or if you are a Gidry, it will really be a big, filled weekend. Uh, so again, I would give you the next Monday off, but I think it's the Wednesday that's off. June 19th is actually a Wednesday. And I think you think that that's uh, the recognition throughout. Okay, there was a plan vacation Bible school meeting today at 1. That's being postponed to later in the week, uh, waiting for those curriculum materials to come in. So probably on Thursday, but again, check the text messages and uh, those other messages uh, that gets to you that, that those who are interested in working with vacation Bible school, uh, sometimes this particular week uh, for that planning uh, meeting. Camp meeting takes place when? July the 11th through the 14th. <laughs> Play that Jeopardy game. July 11th through the, through the 14th. That, that's coming up. Again, camp meeting, we won't have just one guest speaker. Uh, building on the foundation. Again, next year will be the 60th anniversary, anniversary of these particular grounds. And so what we're going to be doing also every night is honoring those who labored among us. Give them flowers before they transition. And so some of, the, some of the saints who are getting just a little bit older now, we're going to recognize them during our nightly services, uh, doing camp meetings. So again, you'll be hearing more and more of that coming up uh, in July. But again, just want to put that on your radar uh, as you're planning your calendar. So, so much coming up. We know the first Sunday in the month of July uh, is our scholarship offering. As uh, again, we talked about that this morning, there could be up to eight college students in our midst that we want to support. So that first Sunday in July is that scholarship offering time. So we plan accordingly. Okay, everybody is good? Okay. Oh. Make your part? Watermelon for everybody. What about the cold cup? No. Uh, again, yesterday the, the, the Edward and Beulah Fontenot uh, family we had a little picnic we hadn't got together since, uh, again, we didn't want to get together just to bury somebody. So we didn't have to bury somebody as we came. Just a picnic that, uh, that we had here to be with family that, uh, that day, that afternoon. And so it was a great time. So we had left over water filling. And you know, I'm going to say this, I, maybe we just so welcome around here. We having food for the family. Folks come off the street. <laughs> Where can I get a plate? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. Pastor. That was nice. It wasn't a repast, though. People <laughs> <laughs> but again, it was a great afternoon, so I think that there's some leftover watermelon that's, uh, that's, uh, that's there. So thanks be to God. All right. Um, we're going to stand. Let's bring ourselves for our benediction. And again, God's placing some, some, some folks on our hearts that we can pray, pray for. Let's have a, a great week. I pray one for another. Um, I'm told that, uh, that Herbie is in the hospital. I want to remember him in prayer uh, as we close, believing for God's divine healing. And uh, have a blessed week as we are moving forward, facing ourselves day by day. Again, to God be the glory. Let's give thanks. Father, we give you thanks, Lord God, for the blessings of the day and the hour. You're so good. And uh, Father, how awed we are to recognize that we are part of the hope of the world today, being a part of this fellowship, oh God. And I thank you, Lord God, that it's okay for us to partner together. It's okay for us to see the Holy Spirit working in all of our lives and all of our hearts. Thanks be to God. Now bless us as we scatter, Lord God, to the various areas. Bless us, Lord God, and strengthen us, empower us. Uh, and again, uh, as we take some time not just to worry about how we're going to make things work in our immediate circle, but broaden our circle, oh God, that we can be concerned about others. Lay a soul on our heart, oh God. The power of God will change them, has the power to do so. 
And in faith, Lord God, we're believing that it will happen. Bless us as we leave this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You're in the hands of the ushers.